So um, we've got an amazing uh, speaker coming up next. Uh, it's Amy Peck from Endeavor VR. And uh, when I was chatting to her backstage, I was like, you know, tell me, tell me how I should introduce you. And she was like, OK, I'm only going to come on stage if people really clap, whoop, and holler really, really loudly. So we've got to do that. And she is the self-proclaimed queen of future town. So be, give yourselves a big round of applause and give a big round of applause for Amy Peck. Let's get in trouble Tiny bit of a fibber because I did not say the hooping and wallering, but I did say to call me the Queen of Future Town, um, which when I'm not uh, performing my duties as Queen of Future Town, uh, I am the founder and CEO of Endeavor VR. And we work with enterprise uh, companies just sort of leveraging this technology and looking at how to scale. Um, but today, I'd love to talk to you about the opportunity for global collaboration and, and really how that's going to fundamentally change the way that we are working together. So I wanted to run through just sort of general use cases that we've been seeing. Um, Tom just talked about you know, a number of advancements on the AR side of things. Um, a lot of these are VR, but there's AR components. Uh, but what this slide really shows is you know, this technology touches every single vertical. And then there's multiple business lines within each business where you can leverage this technology. So even if we took simulation and training as a solution, and then we look at this grid, it's applicable to every single one of these verticals. So you know, healthcare training, um, even retail training, Walmart's been working with Striver. They want to train a million people in virtual reality. Uh, you know, hospitality. Uh, you know, so that's just one aspect. So if we look, drill down into each of these, you know, we look at travel. You know, you can be on a, on a flight to Cincinnati, but you can be in Fiji the entire time. And I would really have liked this last night as we were sitting on the tarmac for an hour. We were three hours delayed getting up here. Um, real estate. I saw uh, Emily Ullman last night who uh, chairs. We can give her a shout out. She's here. Woo! Um, she chairs um, the, the VRARA in San Francisco. You know, she's helping commercial enterprises visualize. She uses Matterport. She's got a great uh, consulting business. And helping commercial real estate do visualizations. And, you know, that is, is a tremendous, you can pre-sell. You can, you can, in theory, pre-sell an entire building before breaking ground. Education, there's so much great data around, you know, how much better children learn in, in VR. Uh, and even AR, because they're excited, right? We have to go to where they are. They're on their iPads already. They're on their mobile phones already. So if we give them great AR learning solutions, they're going to use them. So really what this means is that the solutions are endless. So that's, that's a scary thought for an enterprise entity, right? So it's, it's this, so we're spoiled for choice. Where do we start? How do we begin this? evolution? How do we begin the, the transformation? And if we add a collaboration layer to every one of these verticals that we were talking about, think about how we start changing the way we work together. And then you add remote collaboration to that. Do we go to the right one? Ooh, yeah. Um, so bringing in our teams from either the office next door or from another state or another country, that's when we really start to see the benefit of this technology in the workplace. The beauty of virtual reality is that you can be anywhere at any time. It doesn't matter where you are. And you can be in this environment, and it can be work-related, it can be education. You could go to the pyramids. You could see the sheer scale of what it took to build the pyramids. So when we start to think about how we are going into virtual reality. We'll talk a little bit about AR later, but, but there's a solitary ex experience, right? So you're one person, you're going into virtual reality, you're going in to learn something, to do something, to be something, to see something, to experience something, to play something. But it's a very solitary, it's a specific experience. You're going in for a purpose. Then we have the shared experience. So we could put headsets on all of you, and you could all watch and enjoy the same piece of content together. 
But where it really starts to get interesting on a fundamental level is the shared interactive experience. So these four people could be in the same room together or they could be in far-flung reaches of the globe, and yet they all have a sense of presence. They are interacting in real time with one another. And one of the interesting phenomenon, we've, you know, we've, we've heard um, that you know, there's the avatars are, they're a little bit awkward, we lose our sense of belief. We really don't. When you are there with someone, even if their avatar is, is cartoonish, you, you forget about that because people have mannerism. I talk with my hands. Um, people have mannerisms and facial expressions and sort of the nuance, the cadence of their speech. You're getting all of that. So you're there. You're there with them. So what are the practical elements now of bringing collaboration into the workplace? How are we doing it? So virtual boardroom. Some of you may argue that we cannot get Skype or Google Hangouts to work. How on earth could we have a virtual meeting? Those things are being solved, right? There's network issues, 5G is coming. The headsets, the form factor, that's gonna be much lighter. But think about you know, the time saving and the cost saving, which is gonna be a theme through all of these solutions, of having your board members not have to fly to be able to be together. You can bring in any matter of 2D or 3D media into that environment. You can annotate the whole thing. You can record it. So that has incredible value. Medical training, uh, you know, University of Nebraska is spending you know, millions on a, a new virtual reality training center. Uh, but, but being able to have your professor actually with you while you're working on a cadaver, even a virtual cadaver, which is a, a, you know, a cost savings in and of itself, that has amazing value. That, that physician may be in another hospital. Remote industrial design, really any kind of design. So the automotive industry has really embraced this technology. The way they used to work was they'd you know, design a car, they'd build a full-scale model, they'd ship it, the remote design team would work on it, they'd iterate, they'd, I mean, it was just cumbersome and costly. Now, these remote teams can all come together and work together. And automotive has a very rapid iterative cycle, right? So every year, they're adding you know, new features to each car, and you know, arguably every three to five years, they have you know, entire overhauls of designs. So this cuts that time in half. You know, situational assessment, emergency teams, you know, we're seeing hurricanes on the East Coast, we're seeing fires on the West Coast. There are a number of different stakeholders in each of these situations. There are different departments. And these are life and death situations. So you could use a combination of AR, computer vision, so that all of the teams can act in unison, in real time, to make the right decisions in these, you know, critical situations. City planning, again, another great use case. There's so many things that impact a city when a building is going up. It's the skyline. Is it blocking the view of, of a residential building? What are the traffic flows? What are the parking? This is easily visualized with people together in the same environment. So how do we get there from here? So this is it. It's very simple. Take a picture of this slide, because this is it. It's a building a digital asset library. So if you're wondering where to start, it's here. And most companies already have a digital library, 2D, 3D. If you centralize this and you start to tag it and make sense of these assets, they can be used across every single business line. This is where you build the economy of scale. This is a very costly venture for enterprise. But this is where you start to see the true benefits. So you bring in an asset, the designers build a car, for example. And then that same design can be used for marketing materials. And then that can go to the showroom in the form of a car configurator. And then that can be used for training. So you start to see where you really are building this end-to-end -end scalable strategy. More importantly, this technology allows us to make an impact. So we have corporate responsibility, and we have individual responsibility. So we're able to improve healing, 
So imagine, instead of just you know, multiple physicians or surgeons from one particular hospital, maybe engaging physicians of completely different specialties from around the globe, and the impact that would have on patient care if they could all look at the, a, a, a specific patient scan and come up with multiple approaches based on their respective disciplines. That, that gives patients a choice that will fundamentally change how healthcare is displayed for, for, the, for the patient. Overcoming fears. Standing up in front of you very scary lot took a lot. Um, there's been great uh, uh, research around behavioral science, uh, overcoming addictions and phobias. Again, you can be in an environment with your therapist, talking you through any one of these elements. Um, there's a, a professor at, at a Tulane working on addiction. And he's in the environment with these patients and helping them recognize those triggers that, that you know, send them off on a, on a bender or a binge. Fostering empathy. Tom Emmerich has talked a lot about this. Um, this is one of the great opportunities. We're really able to be in someone else's shoes and see what it's like to you know, be the, the survivor of a, of a war or a quake or a natural disaster. And, and I think just giving us all a little bit better level of understanding of one another. And then, this is something near and dear to my heart, education, inspiring the next generation. So imagine where we have an entire generation of kids who only know collaboration. We have global classrooms, right, where kids from all over the world can learn together and bring with it their culture, but not their politics, and how that might engender an entirely new level of understanding of one another. So, those of you who know me have heard me refer to us in the industry as a second grade soccer team, traveling around the VR ball from conference to conference, talking to each other about how great this technology is. And it is. It's phenomenal. And every one of us in this room, we have developers here, we have service providers here, we have enterprise here. It's, it's time now, right? This isn't a question of when's the technology coming? Is the technology coming? It's here. It's here now. And we all need to keep pushing this technology forward. We need to find a way to galvanize this message and help companies start deploying this technology in this end-to-end -end way. We need to get out of POC phase. That's got to stop. This is doable. And you're going to be Blockbuster, you're going to be Netflix. So the time is now, so let's all get out there. Thanks so much.